Hi there, my name is Anita and this is my sewing channel, Sewing Yogi. I am back today to try and give you an update as to what's been going on in my life and um, some sewing that I've done. Now, I can't remember the last time I vlogged, I think it was back in the summer. Um, yes, I've had quite a few things going on. I had a few issues with um, one of the places I was working for. I won't give you all the boring details, but yeah, it all went a little bit wrong and um, I had to find my way out of that. It was starting to affect my health and my emotional state. I was, yeah, not good. So I managed to get out of that. Um, at the end of September, thankfully, I've always tried to do my own thing, uh, but it is quite challenging. It does take a lot of time and energy, but I have tried my hardest these past few months and I feel like maybe now I'm starting to get somewhere. So fingers crossed it's going to work out for me. But yes, yeah, so it has been um, a long time since I've done this. I have done some sewing but not very much um, but I will show you three things that I have made and then try and get catch up as much as I can I suppose and then from hopefully today I will be able to start vlogging a little bit more regularly um, so yeah now I feel a bit more settled and I have a bit more energy for sewing um, then yeah this hopefully will be a bit more of a recurrence um, but yeah I just have had no energy to do sewing I really just had no drive really for doing anything at all yeah not really doing very much so anyway so the first thing I'm going to chat about is hanging up just there behind me um, I have as I said I think I've said three things um, one that I'm wearing now which I'll leave to the end because this is my most recent make, but then there's two just behind me that I made in the summer and I just haven't had a chance to talk about them. So I'm gonna get on and grab one and I'll start telling you about it. Okay, so I have this um, dress here that I made in the summer. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have already seen it, but it is the Nina Lee Q dress and I've made version two um, with the straps and I didn't bother with the cold shoulder. I didn't really fancy that. Um, I just thought that might bug me a little bit on my arms. So I just omitted that bit. Um, and I really, really enjoyed making this. This is the first time I've ever made this pattern. I know lots of people have already made this, but I've never made it. So I just wanted to give it a go. Now I did put the skirt on from the expansion pack. So you can buy the regular pattern and then she offers an expansion pack, which has the gathered skirt. I think that has some other uh, things in there as well, which I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I fancy putting on the gathered skirt on this one. Um, and it also has pockets. If I can find the pocket, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, it has inseam pockets, um, which of course you can omit, you don't need to put those in. Um, the many, 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 many buttons that just felt like they went on forever was a bit of a nightmare for me. I think I had to redo quite a few, a few times. Um, I always find buttons really difficult. I don't know why, I just, my, my machine's probably not that great for doing buttons. Um, but also I find with viscose, which is what this fabric is, it tends to pucker up the fabric and doesn't quite lie flat. Um, so I had a bit of a problem with that. And then just the, just the number, the volume of buttons that you have to put on. I think there's 15 on there. I can't remember now, but there's, there's a large amount of buttons. Um, and if you've never made this one before, it just has facing inside and the front, which I think I'd probably try and make a little bit bigger. This does tend to flip out a little bit. It's okay when you've got it on, but it does flip out a little. I've just put a pin in it at the moment just to keep it down. Um, and I made a size, I think eight, across the back and across the front neckline here because I think I'm quite narrow in this part in my chest so I went with an 8 and then I went to a 10 for the bust um, there is a bust start which I didn't need to move and then um, I don't think I altered the bodice because I think the Nina Lee patterns they tend to fit me quite uh, well I think I'm um, obviously 
a similar size maybe to their block. Um, and then I went to a 12 for the waist. I graded out to a 12, which I'm not quite sure why I did that. But, you know, I was going through a bit of a stressful time, so my, my brain wasn't working very well. Um, I didn't need to do that. I could have just left it as a 10. It is actually a little bit big, so I wear it with a belt, and I will put a picture in of me when I was on holiday wearing it. Um, so I'm wearing it with a belt, but I am going to take it in. I'm probably going to take it in next year now. I, I can't be bothered to do it now. <laughs> um, but I love this pattern. Really, really love this pattern. I will make another one. I want to make the other version with the cute sort of almost tea dress style top, which I think will be lovely. And I might even have a go at the straight skirt. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna make that one again. I loved making it. It was kind of like a refreshing uh, make to do, apart from the buttons. <laughs> so it did, it did alleviate some of my mental stress. Um, and yeah, it was fun to make. And I and because I was making it for my holiday, I think that's probably what drove me on. Um, it has got darts as well at the front here and the front waist, which I just noticed. I, don't, I didn't remember doing those. Um, again, I didn't have to adjust any of those. So yeah, I took off three and three quarter inches, which is roughly about 9.4 centimetres. Um, and yeah, there's not really much else I can say about this pattern other than I really, really love it. And I will put pictures in the corner now. I've moved over a little bit. So this viscose I just bought again, probably from the market. I don't really remember where I got this one from, but it is probably a market buy. Um, and, you know, I haven't been to the market. This is how bad I've been. I haven't been to the market for such a long time. I haven't really bought much fabric. Um, I bought fabric for some, for some to make my husband something. Um, but that's about it really. And then the buttons are from a shop um, uh, on Etsy. And if you do, if you can see that they're, they're slightly glittery and they're really, really cute um, buttons. Um, and I think the lady is a small business. Um, I know that there's been some um, quite negative sort of things being said about Etsy recently, um, which I had no idea about until maybe you know, yesterday or the day before. I know that they're getting a bad rap for the way that they treat their um, clients. So I don't want to not buy from this lady uh, just because of Etsy, because she's really lovely and always sends me a message um, after I've bought anything. And yeah, she's got a really nice selection of buttons. I will put her um, name down in the description if you want to check out her button selection. I'm not great at buying buttons. I don't buy buttons just because I like them. I always buy them specifically for a project because I'm not great at looking at buttons. <laughs> I just can't be bothered. So yeah, um, anyway, but that is the first one I made back in, um, it must have been the beginning of September before my holiday. But yeah, it's beautiful. And I think once it's adjusted, I'll feel much happier with it and I've taken it in. But yeah, that's the Nina Lee um, dress, uh, Q dress by Nina Lee, I should say. <laughs> okay, so for the next one, I'm trying to do this as fast as possible because the light's going. So I want you to see these before the light disappears. But this was uh, one that I made for a Minerva project. So Minerva gave me this fabric, and you probably remember if you've seen the previous vlogs. Um, obviously, don't worry if you haven't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so they gifted me this fabric, and I wanted to make something that was reflective of the fabric because of the print being so lovely and that those large glorious flowers are just stunning you might not be able to see the background that well on the camera but it's actually a really deep blue uh, background and this fabric is really really soft and drapey it's a viscose um now i will say i've washed it a few times and i think it slightly faded a little bit I'd say I've probably washed it about four times now because I have worn it quite a lot. Um, and it just appears to me that it's just slightly faded. Um, that could be because of the blue background. I know blue is um, a colour that doesn't dry properly and is very transferable. So if you think of denim and you wear a new pair of jeans, the blue always kind of comes off onto your hands, which is always really annoying. But I don't know what it is about blue, but blue doesn't really dry, so it's quite easily transferable. So I'm assuming it, it's a case it just washes out quite easily as well. Um, 
but you know it's still lovely I still really love the dress I actually made I'll show you the back you can see the print a bit more on that there but I actually made the um, sew over its Ravello dress now I have made this as a top before I made it twice the first time I shortened it way too much and it was just awful on me and then the second one I preferred which I actually lengthened I think I get I put an extra two inches on the bottom um, it's still a little bit gapy around the neckline, so I have to wear it a top underneath it or use some uh, fashion tape to sort of stick it down, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so I thought I'd give the dress a go and see what that's like because it's slightly different. Now I went with the same sizes that I used for the top, which was I think an eight on the neckline and then a grading to a 10 for the chest. Let me just get my instructions just to see. Okay, so it's way more complicated than that. <laughs> I did a six on the neckline, which I'm assuming is just the back neckline that I did the six and then the shoulder length. So sort of that length there, um, mainly probably because I am quite short across my shoulders. Um, and then I graded to an eight, which must have been for the bust area. And then a 10. No, I don't know how I managed that, but I, well, that's what I've written down. So yeah, anyway, in the future, I would not do that. I would do a straight size eight, I think. I would probably do the six on the top as always, but then I would probably do an eight uh, for the rest of it because it's just way too large for me. Um, because I'd added extra length for the top, when it comes to doing the dress version, you don't need that extra length because obviously you're having that waistband on the top which is obviously sits a little bit higher. Um, yeah, it doesn't work the same with the dress. I think I took about a half inch or an inch off and then sewed it all up again. And yet it still doesn't sit right on me. It still felt too big. So you'll see there's a tie here. And then inside, I'll just undo that. I'm gonna use both hands. I can't cope with just one hand. <laughs> um, so inside you have a button that sort of is attached to a little bit of elastic. You might have seen this being done before if you've seen any other vlogs about this. So it just attaches to the inside seam. Well, that just sits way too um, big for me. It feels like it really needs to be cinched in way more. So I think maybe I would just do a straight eight. I'm going to take the button off and take in the side seams, I think is probably the best option. And then once that button goes back on again, it will be in the right place. But at the moment, what I'm having to do is use a safety pin, ignore the button and just put a safety pin in. So I'm sitting the this bit here right round the back of the dress, right back of the seam. Just make it feel like I'm, um, I'm not wearing a tent. So, yeah. Um, that one is definitely one that I need to change on the pattern. Um, I'm probably not ever going to make the top again, to be honest. So I will just change the pattern to suit the dress. I do love the dress. Um, I will definitely make the maxi dress again. And I'll probably do the um, shorter dress as well. I love the drap. I didn't think this kind of thing would suit me, to be honest. But I really feel like it's so super comfortable. I love the sleeves on this one. Now, normally, you're supposed to just catch stitch... Um, a few places on the sleeve so I think just at the top and then the middle but I found the gaping really annoying so it kind of just gaped open and once you wash it it's just a nightmare to try and iron again so what I've actually done is I've stitched the fold on the inside so that doesn't move and then I've stitched all the way around by slip stitching all the way around the whole thing so it doesn't move it doesn't budge <laughs> And it's much, much better. I just can't be bothered with faffing around with that with the ironing. I'm not good with ironing. So that to me is a much better option. There was a bit of an issue with the bias binding. Now I made my own bias binding, so it's just the same fabric. And I used the technique that um, you may have seen. It's just you're cutting out a square, say a 10 inch square, and then you cut it in a certain way. Stitch it and cut it in a certain way. And I used the vlog that sound from Frugalissima did um, and I will add that below if you're not quite sure what that is but it's an amazing way of just creating bias binding from just a small space small amount of fabric as opposed to just slashing through large pieces of fabric and wasting it so I made my own bias binding 
I will tell you how much I made. I made, I did, it, this has got to go all the way around the whole dress, around the bottom hem, around the top and all the way around. It just takes forever. Um, it wasn't enjoyable. I've got to be honest, it was not enjoyable. So I did two um, 10 inch squares and then I did one that was a seven inch square. Now I probably could have done maybe two 12 inch. I'm not doing the maths on that because I'll, I will melt my brain melt. So <laughs> I'm probably just gonna stick to what I did, two 10 inch squares and one seven inch square pieces of fabric and then do the special technique to get all the long bits of uh, bias binding. But then the only issue I had with this is when you get to the end, you finish it on this corner uh, that is attached to the button. Um, I'll just undo the button so you can see the inside. It was a bit of a faff. I didn't really understand the instructions um, and it defied logic in my view, the way that they were explaining it. So they tell you to slice that one bias binding flush with that edge there and then somehow magically make this sort of encase over the top of it. Mm, that, that didn't work in my my brain. I tried it, doesn't, it didn't work. I tried some scrap pieces of paper, pieces of paper and some fabric and it wasn't going, it wasn't working in my brain. So what I would suggest is do what I've done is just, I didn't cut any off. I just literally left a good centimeter on this side and folded it under and then left a good centimeter on this side and folded that under. But yeah, it's a really tricky, tricky corner. It's just, yeah, I think I might have even put some hand stitches in just to secure it a little bit more. But it would essentially have a raw edge the way that they tell you to do it. I mean, it might be me, it might be my brain didn't function at the time and um, I couldn't get my head around it. But yeah, apart from that, I love this make. There's also a label that Minerva gave me on the top there. Um, really cute little label. And yeah, really, really lovely. Really nice dress pattern. Um, and that's all I can say for it, really. Um, I really enjoyed making it. I will definitely make some more next summer. I wore it loads in the summer. Wore it loads on holiday. Um, I'll move over, put pictures of that I took in this corner, just in case you want to see it on. I haven't tried them on today because I'm really short of time and the light is going. And let me just check my notes, see if there's anything else that I missed. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and then just two inches off the length. That's all I've done. I've taken two inches off the length and that's it. Um, and that's all I've got to say about that one. So, yeah, that's the Ravello dress by Sew so Over It. So, for the next thing I'm talking about, which is this beauty that I am wearing now, and I absolutely love this so much. This is a Vogue pattern and it is a Vogue 9245. I'll show you the cover. And I think this pattern is actually discontinued now uh, because I haven't found it anywhere, but I bought it probably about three years ago with the desire to make it as it's a jumpsuit, you know, my love of jumpsuits. Um, and I have just not got around to making it. So I thought as a celebration of getting back into sewing, I would make it. So this is what I've made it out. This viscose was just in my stash. And this is, a wearable twill that I thought I'll try and make the pattern first in this and then see what I feel about it because I wasn't sure if it was going to suit me. I have bought some fabric to make another version which is going to be my proper fancy version. Um, so yeah this pattern I love so much. It's very 70s in my view. You get a lovely big collar on there and it's buttons and it's very loose fitting so it's very wide leg you can make the sash that goes with it i didn't have enough fabric in this uh, this one that i am wearing now to make the sash but i'm just wearing a little belt with it my next version will have a sash and yeah the fit is very loose you have um, an elasticated um cuff on there which i've left mine quite loose because i don't like anything too tight on my wrists um, it's quite a nice sort of big voluminous sleeve, this amazing collar, which I just <laughs> adore. Um, yeah, so I'll just stand back and let you look at it. I'll also put pictures in. Okay, so you might be able to just see 
top half. Um, I'll get my step out in a second so you can see the bottom. But yeah, this is um, with a cinched in belt and I'll show you with it out the belt and it has a pleat in the back and I don't know if you can see that pleat that sits underneath the yoke, sits just there, which I really think is a lovely detail. And the bustard, I think is roughly in the right place for me. Um, I've not moved that, so I felt like that was quite um, a good place for where the bustard should be. It has pockets. Now the pockets may not go in the next version, just because I feel that they're slightly, um, they just slightly make the hip area look a little bit bigger than I would like. So I'm not going to put them in the next version, but they are um, quite handy. Um, and then the leg is very, very wide. So you can just see there, that's how wide the leg is. And yeah, they um, are just, just crazy and big and I love them. I just think they're great. So I'll take the belt off and you can see the fit for this. It's just straight down. It literally just goes straight down. Um, and I'll tell you the sizes afterwards when I've sat back down. But yeah, I feel that perfect for the, the chest area. I did grade out a little bit towards the bottom area just because I felt like maybe I needed a bit more space, but I probably didn't need to. Um, but I'm happy with the way it looks anyway, the way it just drapes down. Um, and then, yeah, the buttons down the front. Again, I purchased similar buttons from the same place in Etsy as the Q dress. Again, they're a little bit glittery. I don't know if you can see that. They are, they've got a little bit of glitter in them, which I just love. Um, and that's it, I think. I'll try and stand on a step so you can see the bottoms. I don't know if you... If I can find it in in this messy room of mine. <laughs> okay, so move the camera a little bit. There's those legs. <laughs> There's this um, nice big uh, wide legs, and then the pockets. I just love this. Absolutely adore this. Just think it's so cute. And I feel very glamorous in it when I go out. I have worn it already a few times. I just love it. So I made the size six again on the shoulder and the neckline. So um, this is where the, the shoulder seam ends. And then I graded to an eight um, for the chest area. And then I graded down to a 10 to the, to the waist and just around the hips because I was concerned that I wouldn't have enough room in the um, crotch area or the seat. So I did make a very basic 12 of this first. I'll show you this crazy creased up version that I made from scraps of my fabric. When my husband saw me making this, I think he was a bit concerned about my mental health at this point. <laughs> but yeah, um, I made a very basic 12. So I just wanted to get the bodice done, the back, a sleeve done just for the length. And then obviously the front, just to see where the front would um, sit on me. I think I actually made um, the six originally. I found that was just a little bit too snug for me. And then again, for the crotch area, it was just a little bit snug um, on the crotch area. I can't even find the crotch area on this. It's just crazy. It's just like some, I mean, it's not even full length on the front. Look at this, just... <laughs> the back leg and the front legs weren't the same length just just scraps I had in my <laughs> stash um so I found that the crotch was just sitting a little bit too high so I originally took off I think about two inches of the length of the bodice um and then thought well I didn't need to take that off so I put that back on again and I think originally um yeah I haven't written that down but I know that I've now just taken off an inch for the bodice and then I took off a good um, amount off the bottom. I think it was a good three inches off the bottom of the legs. Um, and then you only need really the elastic, quarter inch elastic for the sleeves, which I just had in my stash. Um, and I used a good four meters for this without the sash. So with the sash, you need a lot more. So it is fabric hungry, this pattern. 
So I have purchased some more fabric from Minerva for my next version, which I am currently cutting out now. I'm very excited about it. I did have plans for it to be finished for um, an evening out that we're going out um, in December, but whether that's actually going to get done, I don't know. I just keep faffing about and taking ages to cut it, cut it out. So yeah, those are the three things that I've made. And obviously with this, um, you'll see a, another version. So if anything I haven't said in this one, I'll probably say in the next one, um, in the next vlog. So yeah, those are the three things that I made recently. I have plans to make other things. Um, I've got lots of things that I want to make now. I've now I've suddenly got my um, sewing um, energy back. Uh, I'm trying to get a another one done, which is another Minerva project. And also I want to make a jacket. Um, and I also want to make, um, yeah, loads of things. There's loads of things. Loads of things I want to make. But it's just time and Christmas is coming as well. So I'm trying to think about things in terms of gifts. And I did actually want to um, uh, join in with the uh, gift of November, I think it's called. But again, I just, with work the way it is, um, it's just taking up way too much of my time right now. So maybe I won't get that done. But anyway, I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing what I've made and that you have come back to me um, after all this time. Um, I did want to also mention that there was a competition that I did in the summertime for um, a giveaway, two fabrics that I had. It was the same fabric, but two colorways. There were two winners. Now the one lady, she got in touch with me and received her fabric um, happily, but the second lady didn't get in touch with me. So I'm assuming maybe that that vlog passed her by and she perhaps didn't see it, or for whatever reason she chose she didn't want to receive the fabric. I don't know, but I'm gonna give that person one more chance to get in touch and I'll put the uh, name underneath here. Please do get in touch with me. And if I don't hear anything by the next vlog that I do, I'm just going to draw um, another name that was given to me at that time. I've still kept those pieces of paper. <laughs> this is how dedicated I am about this. Um, I kept those pieces of paper. I'm just gonna do another draw and then I'll announce that person on the next vlog. It's just in case this other lady doesn't get in touch, but I hope that you do. And because I've got this fabric wrapped up, and it's been wrapped up now for ages, um, waiting to be sent to you. So yeah, hopefully you get in touch. Now I did receive some lovely gifts for my birthday recently, and I wanted to show you one. Um, they were something that I've wanted for ages. And fortunately a friend said, what would you like for your birthday? Which is rare, no one ever asks, actually asks me. <laughs> So I jumped on it and said, yeah, I want this. Um, of course, if you don't want to buy me, that's totally fine. But she was happy to buy me. So what, what she did was go on the website and this website now offers a gift voucher. So you can buy the gift voucher for the item, which also covers the free delivery or delivery. I think they were supposed to deliver me an email on the day and it never arrived. So I did get in touch with them and they... Um, the lady was uh, really, really helpful and said there must be an issue with the website. So she did actually say she was going to include a free gift for me, which I was, thought was lovely. So if you're obviously on in, in Instagram, you might have seen that I've already received these now. Um, I received them the other day and I'll just get them now to show you. So I know that there's quite a few people that have already got these, but <laughs> I'm always late. But... Um, my beautiful friend bought me some Fox Glove and Field pattern weights, um, which arrived the other day. I absolutely adore them. I chose for, there's different versions you can choose, and I chose Liberty Love. So that's how they come in the box. And they are really beautiful, absolutely stunning, and so beautifully made. She makes them, if you didn't know already, she makes them to order. So let's just get that in view if you can see it. They do take a good week to arrive. Oh, that's another one there. And I just think they're stunning. They're just so beautiful. I think this one's probably my favourite actually. That one there. 
Um, but yeah, I love them. They're just so cute. They're just beautiful. I love them. I'll show you all of them. Bore you with <laughs> my obsession. But yeah, so thank you, Claire, if you are watching for these beautiful pattern weights. I've been wanting them for ages. Um, but like I say, no one really asks me ever what I want. My husband's not uh, one for um, receiving a list. He thinks that's wrong. We shouldn't do that. So I can never ask for anything. Although one year I did want something and I, and I just put it on a post-it note on the fridge, not really expecting to receive it. And then I did actually receive it. So <laughs> maybe I should do that again. But yeah, thank you, Claire, for that. That's beautiful. Um, and also my free gift that um, she gave me, I think her name is Louise. Um, yeah, so Louise from Foxglove and Field did uh, give me a beautiful tin that also goes with the patterns and I think it um the pattern weight um which was lovely of her um but I think there was maybe just an issue with the website she, she had said that she's recently changed it so I think it might just had a few um issues with it, the way it was functioning but yeah I'm really pleased I've got them now I shall be using those later on when I do my cutting out and that's about it that's all I've got to say and I really thank you for your um commitment <laughs> and your loyalty and your support uh, for sticking with me if you have come back and watched this vlog thank you so very much and I, I i will try my best to get some more out in the future that's a bit more regular um but yeah thanks ever so much and if you have liked this vlog press the like button as this really does help me and yeah, if you've not subscribed, then please do subscribe just so that you can see the next version of this <laughs> this in all its funkiness. Uh, so, yeah, thank you ever so much. And I hope you're all having an amazing day. You're all really, really well. And I shall see you next time. Bye.